We'll be talking about the dashboards, uh, layers, panels, and groupings. Let's go and uh, find a data set that we would like. I'm going to use the sales by region as my data set. Okay, so let's view that quickly. Make sure that we understand what's going in our data set. You can have multiple data sets, but this is good enough for me. It's going to have region, category, subcategory, revenue, and units sold, and probably a couple of prompts. Something simple like this would be good enough. All right, so the first thing I want to do is create a new dashboard. Obviously, it'll be listed as document. We'll have another talk about documents, but today we're just going to be working with dashboards. They're very similar in design, but a little bit different in function. So we're going to use the blank dashboard, but feel free to use any other preset template. And then once we go in, it'll ask us first to choose our first data set, and we decided on sales by region, which is right here. Okay, great. So here's our dashboard. Let me expand this so we can see it better. So this is our layout area that we're going to be working with. Here you'll have panels. If you don't see the same view that I see, just make sure you're collecting, clicking on this one and that you have your property list selected here. Okay, so this is the property list and there's two side-by-side -side panels. One with the list of items that are available. And this template, the blank template, has already a panel stack built into it. I'm just going to remove this because I want to start from a total scratch. And this is what you'll have a document and a body. And you'll have one layout. Now, if you don't see this layout right here, what could have happened is that in your properties of the document under formatting, under the advance, you could have this disabled so it won't show this layout tab. It won't show when you have one layout. Okay, so if I do this, there it goes, it disappears until I add a new layout. But for this demo, we're going to work with layouts, so I'm going to keep that visible and advance, and I'm going to show multiple layouts. Okay, all right, so we got this here. We have this plus, which allows us to add more layouts as we go. Okay, each layout, once you click on in plus, will prompt you again to select from templates okay and you can select a new layout but there's also something cool you could do you could actually uh, import a document into a layout so I can go here and go to one of my pre-built documents or sales and profitability let's say it'll add it right here as a new tab and if it had multi layouts it's gonna add each one of them separately okay and you can right click and delete the ones you don't want and you, you could keep whatever parts you want. All right, so I'm going to delete these because we're working with blanks. So for this demo, let's just create two blank dashboards, okay? Now each one, when you click on the tab, has its own property list, okay? So this one, the new layout, has a predefined panel stack. I'm going to remove that. I'm going to work on layout one. And before we dive in deeper, I'm just going to go to Format and Document Properties and just walk through the main ones and the important ones that you need to worry about. This is the page size. If you're worried about printing, you want to make sure that you choose the right paper size. Again, if you want, to, if you're worried about printing as your you know objective, you want to fit it to one page by one. Otherwise, you want it to adjust 100% of the viewing area in the browser. You can control margins as well. The layout name layout one uh, you have colors the background color this is most mo mostly important for web browsers so if you think about this uh, this is the background or the empty space sections with dashboards you really want to worry about the body layout you don't really care about the other layouts unless you have special custom need the mobile again because this dashboard is expected to run in mobile as well you can let it you know uh, adjust to portrait, portrait or landscape, or you can choose one on, and only one if you don't want it to uh, uh, rotate. Okay. And uh, for the mobile phone, you have a few options here in the iPad as well. 
You can enable incremental fetch if you have a lot of data coming in through the dashboard and you don't want it to all load up at one time because you want the initial startup to be faster, you can in implement incremental fetch. The document has a few special runtime properties. For instance, which, one, which modes do you want it to be available for the user? and which export forms do you want it to be available. For example, you might want to disable Flash or enable or disable HTML. You may want to make it remove the editable, editable uh, mode so that the user can't edit, etc. And you want to tell how to run in default. Do you want to run in interactive, edit, express, Flash, etc. And then you can always open it in full screen mode or remove the full screen mode will show you how that is different in web but typically dashboards run in full screen mode unless you're still in development stage you can disable this until you're done again there's a few more you can walk through them and the fixed mode of the uh, dash dashboard or document is fixed by default you can have it automatic I don't recommend automatic because graphs and some other items might get really stretched in ways that you weren't expecting and you can add your watermark to your uh, dashboard. You could control some of the exporting, not too much, but some of it here and the rest of it from outside the dashboard. You can add table of contents to your uh, to your uh, dashboard. Caching, again, you can control caching properties. If you're using Flash, you can have some Flash properties set right here, like the size of the pie, etc. If you're using mobile, you can say, okay, do you want my layouts basically in form of tabs or they want the tabs to disappear and just make it swipeable usually I go with swipe because you want to switch from one layout to another you don't need to press on a tab in a tabulet you want to go and just swipe it left to right or right to left to go from one page to another okay and finally the advanced which we showed the single layer one and the preloading is similar the prefetch is a little bit different Do you want to load all the panels at once or do you want to only load the panel one at a time and this is not effective in flash but in the DHTML mode it, it is effective okay and it can increase your uh, initial panel load speeds and there's more details that you can look into if you want to customize further obviously you get into the detail here what after you build uh, a dashboard so this can be changed later on as well okay so let's create our first panel within layout one you can't just add a panel. You first have to add a panel stack. The panel stack can have multiple panels in it, okay? So I'm going to click here. It's going to give me this plus sign. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to use, utilize a small area. There we go. That's my panel one. There's tons of controls here. You can go through them on your own. Call this my stack. All right. Then I can go to the panel and I can give the first panel you know something like let's say micro strategy panel one okay and I can give it a title too so I can call it strategy uh, rooster panel one it's spelled Alright, so there's my first panel, okay? And you can keep adding panels as much as you want. Uh, you can you can view your panels here. So if you want to add another panel, just right click on this guy here and go to panels. You can duplicate a panel. This is very useful when you're when you're creating similar panels. Or you just go to manage and you start adding or duplicating from here. So we could add an another panel. Okay. And then you can reorder them and set as current. Set as current is important because what happens is uh, the one you set as current when you before you save is the one that's going to be uh, viewed by the user when they uh, run this uh, dashboard. So we're just going to keep it at this one for now. And then you have advanced. It'll show you which ones are targeting this uh, panel stack, which we don't have any yet, and give you some control over the height, width, layout. Uh, we did that visually, but you could also control it here specifically, and you can lock it. You could also add a tooltip, and again, here's the name of the stack. This is not the name that is appearing out here. The name of the title will appear. 
show the title bar or hide the title bar. The title bar here was the one that had MicroStrategy Rooster. You could show it or hide it depends, depending on your needs, okay? And finally, uh, you can allow current uh, panel to be changed without selector. Again, this is, uh, this is mostly effective for the, the, the mobile, okay? Okay, so I've created my uh, first panel stack and my first two panels. Let me add something to it. I'm going to add something from the data set. Let's just add the report as is for now. Okay, so I want to drag it and place it inside this panel. There you go. You see the yellow line. You know it's inside. And um, let me just put it here in, on the top for now or in the middle. All right, so I'm keeping it as is and I have some properties that I can control so for instance I don't want the title I can remove the title etc and I can control the color the background or the transparency and let's just give it a little bit of color here just give this uh, something to stand out this red and I'm gonna keep the title but if I want to change the title I can also go here from the uh, formatting and select the title and I can give the title a little bit of color as well just do this blue up top down gradient there we go and I can also format the text of the title so if I said you know something like white and bold okay again I'm only working with one panel at a time so if I go to the next panel, I'm not going to necessarily see the same settings. Okay, so I go to the next panel, display next, or I can just simply click it here and go. So what we see here, we don't have the same color in the background, but the title has the same property. Okay, so the title belongs to the panel stack, but the inside, the body pan is the panel property specific. Okay, and here let's add the same one down here okay I'm going to resize it or shrink it to fit again I'm just using a small space here and one thing I, I'm going to do is I'm going to view this as a graph okay just so we can differentiate I'm not going to do much with it I'm just going to keep it as simple as possible okay so now we created the two panels but the question is, um, how do we move from one panel to another? Well, we saw the option in mobile that we can allow it to swipe. But if you're using you know, the web, you're going to need a specific selector. So what we're doing here is we're going to add a panel selector. So I'm going to click on this here, the selector, and I'll drop it somewhere convenient. Just drop it here. And I'm going to right click and look at the properties. Say so I want this to be called my first panel selector. Okay. You can add more information if you want. And then the layout, the selector itself is what matters. Drop down, I'm going to select panel. And the flash style can be automatic or specific. And it's a drop down. Well, I don't want to drop down. Let's use something like a button bar let's make sure it's horizontal because you don't want it to be on top of each other unless you're putting it on the sides and there's some other items you can control and the selection type is an include or exclude obviously in a panel stack include makes sense and then it's saying which stack remember this is the name I give to the panel stack right here so the selector is a property that controls the panel stack okay not the panel specifically all right so good enough for me and let's see this is the size height etc all right so here's my panel stack and you can customize it give it color etc so um, so far we've shown the two panel we've created the two panels and we've created the two layers there's one more thing I want to add before we go into the web which is the grouping the grouping lets you do something cool because it can let you do this virtual grouping of your information I'm going to add year right here. So think about this as um, 
think, think about this as a grouping after the rendering of the information. What it allows you to do is if you have something like year, it sort of operates like a page by, okay? And it gives you some year header, which means that this information right here is associated with the grouping information, not the detail information, okay? So if you had a totaling number, let's say you had the year here, and then you had the revenue, it'll be grouped by at the level of the revenue. One thing to be careful about is the year becomes a grouping for everything. This will be rolled up at the year level, but so but the selection here, so for instance, here we have year, it'll be reflecting the year associated with whatever you select at runtime, okay? So it kind of, it's tricky. If you're using subtotals or other filters, you might see weird behavior. If you're not sure what you're doing, be careful about it. Not too many people use the groupings. They prefer to use attribute selectors. We'll talk about that in a different um, video, okay? So at this point, I'm just gonna stop here and I'm gonna save this information. And you can give the layouts a name. So I can call this whatever I want. All right, there we go. So I gave it a name and I'm gonna save and close. And I'm just gonna save it in the main folder for simplicity. I'm just gonna call it, give it a simple name. All right, so we're saving our dashboard. Great, let's close. And let's go to our main folder, public objects. See here, actually I want it in the reports folder so I can see it in the shared folder. And now I'm gonna go to the web, login. I'm gonna go to shared reports. Let's run this. In the web, you're gonna see all the problems that, you know, or all the design issues that didn't work out because the web will uncover for you all sorts of, you know, design issues. So for instance, Here's the two layouts that we have. Okay, but what is the problem here? Well, we see the title of the panel stack selector, but we don't see the selection options, okay? So I can go to edit mode, and what's happening is this is too small, maybe. Okay, and let's just pull this down. And pull this down a little bit more. Okay, so what happened here is that they were hiding. And I can remove the selector if I don't want the selector title. Again, properties, and I can say, don't show me the title bar. Okay. And there we go. So now when I select here, it's gonna toggle between the two panels that I've created. And again, it's a simple selector. You can modify, you can even change the colors and text and whatever you want. Just simple, you know, right click and property and formatting and start playing with the color, the fonts, etc. And uh, you have some more effects like sync and rise, etc. You also can control some of the selection property. This is still a selected panel, so it's got the simple options here. And it can tell you, you can change the panels text that you're targeting by the selector, okay? And this is the layout, the size, again, what it is, button bar, maybe you want to change it to a uh, link bar, etc. You can make those changes here. And then you have some general properties. There's less properties in the web than you have in the desktop. That's why we start developing in the desktop. And as you get better at this, you can control some options from here and some options for there to make it work out best. But anyway, so once you're done with editing, you go back. So I changed it to a link bar. Again, you can change all the colors and the appearances. Again, here's the grouping. So this is showing us the revenue for 2010. And obviously it's filtering for the year. So if I change to 11, this will change to 11 and this value will represent the 2011. And uh, I could also remove the grouping at any time, okay? And you can also click on layout two to go to your next layout or you can add a new layout on your own. So you can just come here and create a new layout, okay? and you can keep adding layouts and adding content as you wish. You will still have the document structure available per layout. And you will also have the data set shared across the different layouts. Okay, thank you very much for watching this short demo.